You're watching the History Fair Channel. In this video we're looking at the Battle of Fort Donelson, part one. The Battle of Fort Donelson was fought from February the 11th to the 16th of 1862 in the Western Theatre of the American Civil War. The Union capture of the Confederate fort near the Tennessee-Kentucky border opened the Cumberland River, an important avenue for the invasion of the South. The Union success also elevated Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant from an obscure and largely unproven leader to the rank of Major General and earned him the nickname of Unconditional Surrender Grant. Following his capture of Fort Henry on February the 6th, Grant moved his army 12 miles overland to Fort Donelson from February the 11th to the 13th and conducted several small probing attacks. On February the 14th, Union gunboats under Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote attempted to reduce the fort with gunfire, but were forced to withdraw after sustaining heavy damage from the fort's water batteries. On February the 15th, with the fort surrounded, the Confederates, commanded by Brigadier General John B. Floyd, launched a surprise attack, led by his second-in-command, Brigadier General Gideon Johnson Pillow, against all the right flank of Grant's army. The intention was to open an escape route for retreat to Nashville, Tennessee. Grant was away from the battlefield at the start of the attack, but arrived to rally his men and counter-attack. Pillow's attack succeeded in opening the route, but Floyd lost his nerve and ordered his men back to the fort. The following morning, Floyd and Pillow escaped with a small detachment of troops, relinquishing command of, to Brigadier General Simon Bolivar Buckner, who accepted Grant's demand of unconditional surrender later that evening. The battle resulted in virtually all of Kentucky, as well as much of Tennessee, including Nashville, falling under Union control. The Battle of Fort Donelson, which began on February the 12th, took place shortly after the surrender of Fort Henry, Tennessee, on February the 6th, 1862. Fort Henry had been a key position in the centre of a line defending Tennessee, and the capture of the fort now opened the Tennessee River to Union troop and supply movement. About 2,500 of Fort Henry's Confederate defenders escaped before its surrender by marching the 12 miles east to Fort Donelson. In the days following the surrender at Fort Henry, Union troops cut the railroad lines south of the fort, restricting the Confederate's lateral mobility to move reinforcements into the area to defend against the larger Union forces. With the surrender of Fort Henry, the Confederates faced some difficult choices. Grant's army now divided Confederate General Albert Sidney Johnston's two main forces. PGT Beauregard at Columbus, Kentucky with 12,000 men and William J. Hardy at Bowling Green, Kentucky with 22,000 men. Fort Donelson only had about 5,000. Union forces might attack Columbus, they might attack Fort Donelson, and thereby threaten Nashville, Tennessee. Or Grant and Major General Don Carlos Buell, who quartered in Louisville with 45,000 men, might attack Johnston head-on, with Grant following behind Buell. Johnston was apprehensive about the ease with which the Union gunboats defeated Fort Henry. He was more concerned about the threat from Buell than he was from Grant and suspected the river operations might simply be a diversion. Johnston decided upon a course of action that forfeited the initiative across most of his defensive line. Tactically, admitting that the Confederate defences strategy for Tennessee was a sham. On February the 7th, at a council of war, held in the Covington Hotel at Bowling Green, 
he decided to abandon Western Kentucky by withdrawing Beauregard from Columbus, evacuating Bowling Green and moving his forces south of the Cumberland River at Nashville. Despite his misgivings about his defence ability, Johnson agreed to Beauregard's advice that he should reinforce Fort Donelson with another 12,000 men, knowing that a defeat there could mean the inevitable loss of the middle of Tennessee and the vital manufacturing and arsenal city of Nashville. Johnston wanted to give command of Fort Donelson to Beauregard, who had performed ably at Bull Run, but the latter declined because of a throat ailment. Instead, the responsibility went to Brigadier General John B. Floyd, who had just arrived following an unsuccessful assignment under Robert, Lee, Robert E. Lee in Western Virginia. Floyd was a wanted man in the North for alleged graft and secessionist activities when he was a Secretary of War in the James Buchanan administration. Floyd's background was political, not military, but he was nevertheless Senior Brigadier General on the Cumberland River. On the Union side, Major General Henry W. Halleck, Grant's superior as commander of the Department of the Missouri, was also apprehensive. Halleck had authorised Grant to capture Fort Henry, but now he felt that continuing to Fort Donelson was risky. Despite Grant's success to date, Halleck had little confidence in him, considering Grant to be reckless. Halleck attempted to convince his own rival, Don Carlos Buell, to take command of the campaign to get his additional forces engaged. Despite Johnson's high regard for Buell, the Union general was as passive as Grant was aggressive. Grant never suspected his superiors were considering relieving him, but he was well aware that any delay or reversal might be an opportunity for Halleck to lose his nerve and cancel the operation. On February the 6th, Grant wired Halleck, Fort Henry is ours and I shall take and destroy Fort Donaldson on the 8th and return to Fort Henry. This self-imposed deadline was overly optimistic due to three factors. Miserable road conditions on the 12-mile march to Donaldson, the need for troops to carry supplies away from the rising floodwaters, and the damage that had been sustained by Foote's Western Gunboat Flotilla in the artillery duel at Fort Henry. If Grant had been able to move quickly, he might have taken Fort Donaldson on February the 8th. Early in the morning on February the 11th, Grant held a council of war in which all of his generals supported his plans for an attack on Fort Donaldson, with the exception of Brigadier General John A. McClelland, who had some reservations. This council in early 1862 was the last one that Grant held for the remainder of the Civil War. Grant's Union Army of the Tennessee, of the District of Cairo, consisted of three divisions, commanded by Brigadier Generals McClelland, C.F. Smith and Lew Wallace. Two regiments of cavalry and eight batteries of artillery, supported by the infantry divisions. Altogether, the Union forces numbered nearly 25,000 men, although at the start of the battle, only 15,000 were available. The Western Gunboat Flotilla under Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote consisted of four ironclad gunboats, USS St. Louis, USS Carondelet, USS Louisville and USS Pittsburgh and three timber-clad gunboats, USS Essex and USS Cincinnati had been damaged at Fort Henry and they were being currently repaired. Floyd's Confederate force of approximately 17,089 men consisted of three divisions, garrison troops and attached cavalry. The three divisions were commanded by Floyd. 
and Brigadier Generals Bushrod Johnson and Simon Bolivar Buckner. During the battle, Johnson, the engineering officer who briefly commanded Fort Donelson in late January, was effectively superseded by Brigadier General Gideon J. Pillow. Pillow, who arrived at Fort Donelson on February 9th, was displaced from overall command of the fort when the more senior Floyd arrived. The garrison troops were commanded by Colonel John W. Head and the cavalry by Nathan Bedford Forrest. Fort Donelson was named for named for Brigadier General Daniel S. Donaldson, who selected its site and began construction in 1861. It was considerably more formidable than Fort Henry. Fort Donaldson rose about 100 feet on approximately 100 acres of dry ground above the Cumberland River, which allowed for plunging fire against attacking gunboats, an advantage Fort Henry did not enjoy. The river batteries included 12 guns, 10 32-pounder smoothbore cannons, two 9-pounder smoothbore cannons, an 8-inch howitzer, a 6.5-inch rifle and a 10-inch Columba Yard. There were three miles of trenches in a semicircle around the fort and the small town of Dover. The outer works were bounded by Hickman Creek to the west. Lick Creek to the east and the Cumberland River to the north. These trenches, located on a commanding ridge and fronted by a dense abatis of cut trees and limbs, stuck into the ground and pointed outwards. These were backed up by artillery and manned by Buckner and his Bowling Green troops on the right, and Johnson and Pillar on the left. Facing the Confederates from left to right were Smith, Lew Wallace and McClelland. McClelland, right flank which faced Pillow, had insufficient men to reach overflowing Lick Creek, so it was left unanchored. Through the centre of the Confederate line ran the marshy Indian Creek, this point defended primarily by artillery overlooking it onto each side. That is the end of part one. Please join us next time for part two of the Battle of Fort Donelson. If you found the information in this video informative, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for listening.